Good morning, dear friends, and a warm welcome to this retreat as we are going through the 25 days in preparation for Christmas. On this 15th day, we offer ourselves into the presence of the Lord, believing that the Lord is preparing us for a very powerful experience of Christmas as the change happens within our hearts, as the decoration takes place in the hearts of our discipleship. Let us offer ourselves and let us offer all our intentions that we have deep within our hearts into the presence of Jesus. Let the Lord who understands us and understands our prayers look kindly upon us. Let us all kneel as we invite the Lord in the blessed sacrament. Oh, sacrament, most holy, oh, sacrament divine, oh, praise and all thanksgiving, be every moment thine, oh, sacrament. Presenting ourselves to our Lord, the Lord in the Blessed Sacrament, understanding with our eyes of faith in whose presence we are in. We are in the presence of the Son of God. The Lord has come amongst us in the form of a simple white piece of bread but the same presence of Jesus who walked on the face of the earth. The same Jesus who walked, touched, comforted, healed, proclaimed. The same Jesus who took up the cross and died for us. The same Jesus who was resurrected. That same Lord's presence here amongst us with the deep desire that we want to experience Jesus. We want to feel His touch. We want to experience His presence around us and within us. Offer ourselves to the sacrament who is most holy, knowing and believing who we are standing in the presence of. Understanding the significance of this moment, let us not take it for granted when we come in front of people of great position, of great fame, we think of it as a chance of a lifetime. So often we click photographs with those we are so impressed by. But here we are in the presence of the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Is it because we are permitted at any time to come into His presence that there is at times an indifference that sets into our heart? A casualness when we come into His presence? Is it because He has permitted us to come any time to Him? Have we forgotten the relevance of who He is? Have we forgotten the greatness of the God in whose presence we have entered. When we do that, we take His, ex His presence for granted. Look at Jesus. He has permitted me to come into His presence. He has allowed me to look at Him and to experience Him in the Blessed Sacrament. He has allowed me to experience His love from the Blessed Sacrament. O oh Lord, in the Blessed Sacrament, we understand who you are. 
and we exalt who you are when we are in your presence here the same jesus who touched who touched peter james and john the same jesus who touched the woman who was suffering that same jesus who touched the man who was paralyzed for 38 years the same jesus who comforted the lepers the same jesus who touched who comforted and healed the broken hearted the same jesus who raised jairus's daughter the same jesus who brought lazarus back to life the same jesus who carried the cross and defeated death at calvary the same jesus is who i worship over here lord jesus in the blessed sacrament let me be in awe of you let my heart be lifted up to you let my heart worship you o sacrament most holy i pray and i worship every moment will be his because he is with us god loves to be with his people he loves to be with us how much do we love to be with him it always boils down to that question how much do we love to be with him He loves to be with us. His very name is Emmanuel, God with us. How much do I love to be with him? How much do I desire to be with him? The Lord reminds us, I want to be in your heart. I want to be around you. I want to be within you. I want to share a relationship with you. He journeyed with the people of Israel through their moments of the Exodus 40 years 40 years in the wilderness. The people complained why they weren't reaching their destination. the people complained about food and water they complained about a roof over their head but 40 years they had the privilege of god walking with them god being with them and yet they were seeking other things how many years have you lived your life on earth for the 20 years the 30 years the 40 years the 50 70 80 years that god has walked with you kept his promise emmanuel i will be with you the promise the sign that was given to us for how many years he's journeyed with us and how often we have ended up ignoring him we were more attracted by other people we were more attracted by more exciting situations we looked back like the people of israel and thought we were better off in egypt we went back to our egypts seeking material comforts physical pleasures but here he's waiting emmanuel he's been journeying with us every day of our life every day 
not one person connected to our life has done that for us every day he has journeyed with us not a day when he has not been with us our parents our spouses our children our best of friends no one has ever done that for us every day he has journeyed with us am i excited that my god is with me am i celebrating that my god is with me or am i celebrating something else that sign that my god is with me he is my manuel he journeys with me we pray sign shall be given a virgin will conceive a human baby bearing a diminished deity the glory of the nations a light for all to see and hope for all who will embrace his warm reality he made you a god is with us and if god is with us who could stand against us a god is with us that great promise that he will always be with us he has kept it how old are you today think of that and think of every day that god has been with us every day of these years that god has journeyed with us he has kept his promise i am emmanuel i am god with you even before a mother knew that we existed in her womb our god already knew us He has been knitting us together in our mother's womb way before our parents could even think about us our god has already known us every tiny moment of our life he has never abandoned us we stay strong we stay strong in jesus we hold on to jesus because he is our manuel he is god with us Amen. again Emmanuel God is with us
I will never ever fear because I know for all these years my God has been with me. My Lord has journeyed with me. Whatever challenges I face today, whatever difficulties I have today, I'm not going to be afraid. All through these years, every day of it, He has been with me. Then why should I be afraid? What should I be afraid of? My Lord is with me. I will be able to overcome everything through the power of Christ who dwells in me. My God is with me. That is what I celebrate during this whole season. That my God will always be with me. He will be with my family and we will overcome. Emmanuel, God is with us. Many might try to put me down. Many might try to destroy me. But I will not be afraid. My confidence is in my God. As the psalmist says, my confidence is not in horses or chariots. My, my, my confidence is in my God. That my God who has journeyed with me through every day of my life will journey with me through this darkness. He will journey with me through these challenges let anyone try to pull me down let anyone try to destroy me I will not be afraid let anyone stand against me I will not be afraid let anyone try to disturb my parenthood I will not be afraid let anyone try to destroy my marriage I will not be afraid let anyone try to disturb my vocation I will not be afraid he has journeyed with me every day of my life. He will journey with me today as well. Emmanuel, God is with us. The greatest friend that we will ever, ever have is the one who has journeyed with us every day. The greatest companion we can ever have is the one who has journeyed with us every day. The greatest comfort we can ever have is the one who has journeyed with us every day. That is my strength and that is my comfort. And I will hold on to my Emmanuel who will be with me at every moment of my journey. I will celebrate my Emmanuel who will be with me at every moment of my journey. I will not be afraid. Emmanuel, God is with us. Hallelujah, Jesus, I celebrate you, Lord. I glorify you, Emmanuel. I celebrate you, my Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Praise you, Lord. We worship you. Adore your holy name. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glorify you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. We adore your holy name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We praise you. Hallelujah, 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 Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 Jesus. We praise you. We worship.
someone's been having acute sinusitis the lord is touching someone's praying for your mother who had a fall and in the hospital the doctors don't seem very positive about how she will walk again the lord comforts you i will journey with her as i've journeyed in the past maggie the lord's comforting you in the midst of all the burdens you're carrying in your heart lisa the lord's mercy is upon you open your eyes and you will see justina Darren Leslie Candida Josh The Lord is strengthening your heart in the midst of the challenges that you have to face. Don't be afraid. someone who's been having twitching sensations on one part of your face and you've been worried about it the lord tells you am i not with you don't think too much about it just let it go i'll take care of it someone having a pain on your muscles or the weakness of your muscles on your left hand above the elbow the lord is touching there are many people who have been feeling within yourself that you have no one that no one cares for you no one understands you no one loves you and you get this feeling all the time within you that you have no one and no one cares for you the lord reminds you i care for you and i send people so often to remind you that i care for you open your eyes and see and you will be at peace a young child having some kind of a complication or pain around the navel the lord is touching and healing someone suffering with hemorrhoids the lord is touching and healing Mother you pray for us today You who know who knew your beloved son so well pray for us that we might know him too Hail Mary full of grace the Lord is with thee blessed art thou amongst women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb Jesus Holy Mary mother of God Pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Kindly be seated. Our brothers and sisters testify for the glory of God. Yunis Nyao from Nairobi, Kenya. I've been struggling for the past 9 years with the feelings of unforgiveness, hate, rejection, fear and hurt. I've also been struggling financially with a lot of debts. While watching Divine Columbo's preparation for Christmas, all those feelings of anguish that has got me for so many years have started coming to an end. I'm feeling so much of 
peace, no more fear and sadness in my life. I trust in Jesus to provide for me and I thank the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Sheila Clement from Singapore. I attended all the days of the retreat held at the Immaculate Heart of Mary Church in Singapore. This is an outreach that we had done a couple of months ago. Just a few weeks before the retreat, for some reason, the toenail on my right big toe came out, but not fully. I had a very hard time managing this nail. I saw the doctor and it was said that it would take about six months for another nail to grow over this dangling nail. I was given an antifungal cream and was told to cover it with gauze every day. Meanwhile, I went to the pharmacy to purchase more gauze to use daily. I attended the retreat in this kind of a situation. At the retreat on the first day, you mentioned about healing of the big toe on the right foot. Since you mentioned that in my heart, I said a prayer for healing for my right toe and thought nothing about it afterwards. On the second day, you mentioned healing of the right big toe again. When I went home the second day and I removed my socks, I noticed that the dangling big tail was not, nail was not on my toe anymore. Neither was it under the gauze. I, neither was it under the gauze I had placed over it. Instead, there was a new nail which was so new and whitish pink that was three quarters covering the toe. I could not believe what I was seeing. I knew that Jesus had healed my toenail situation instantly. There was no need to endure this for six months. At that time, the thought of enduring the pain and discomfort of the dangling toenail was troubling. Both the doctor and the pharmacist said it would take a long time for that nail to drop off and a new one to come. Jesus did it instantly. I thank and praise Jesus for his healing. Hallelujah. 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 Anil de Cruz from Muscat. I've been following the online retreat and it has blessed me and my family in numerous ways. Moreover, it has enhanced my spiritual life, making me a better person, looking at others in a more tolerant manner, and above all, looking forward to hearing this online retreat on a daily basis, something new every day for me. This has brought me closer to Jesus, and I pray he gives me the courage to reach out to people around and evangelize. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Dear brothers and sisters, as our friends testify, it's a reminder to us this is exactly what these testimonies are supposed to mean for the change and transformation within us, for a passion to grow within our heart that I too need to reach out to my brothers, my sisters and share the love of Jesus with them. That is something we are all called to do. That is what these retreats are supposed to make and create within us as well. That burning desire, I cannot keep quiet about Jesus. I want to share him with everyone around me. We praise and thank Jesus for these, our brothers and sisters, and remind ourselves the Lord uses us as well. As we've been going through these days of the retreat, the 25 reflections that we are taking from the 25 characters of the scriptures connected to the birth of Jesus, today we shall reflect on the shepherds who were given the message um, around, at, uh, I think a few days ago we had a reflection on the angels who appeared to the shepherds. Let us think about the shepherds today who were given that beautiful message of the coming of Jesus, the birth of the little babe, and how they would go and find, they would search and they would find the blessed mother and Joseph and the little baby, and they would kneel and they would worship. The shepherds represent simplicity and humility. The simplicity of the shepherds is very obvious. 
and you start thinking to yourself why the shepherds were being given this message but we also need to understand well the three wise men were given the message important people were given the message but the shepherds were given the message also because there is a consistency in which or a consistency in the way in which god interacts with people a consistency consistency in which god needs the simple god needs the simple to pass on his message the simplicity of the shepherds became essential in passing on the message of christ amongst the people now we have no clue of what they did after they went back nothing the scripture has spoken about but obviously it isn't like what happened in herod's palace or what happened with the three wise men who went back to their own country but it would have been the shepherds who would have carried the message into the villages amongst the people or what they saw about the angels who came and gave the message and what they what what they went and saw in the little manger and the one they worshiped over there the simple the in vincentian spirituality out of the five virtues one of the virtues saint vincent de paul gives so much of emphasis on is simplicity he speaks and emphasizes on simplicity and he says it is easy for god to speak to the simple it is easy for god to speak to the simple to have a simple heart when we have conversations it is very easy to speak to people who are simple when you have a conversation um when when i was much uh, younger i used to find it very difficult to have conversation with people to make conversation with with anyone and more so if i was in a strange environment if i was at a family function where i didn't know many of the people i would struggle to make a conversation with anyone and i found it much more easier when it was a simple person to talk to they didn't have any airs about them they were not they were, they were not speaking in sophisticated ways that were going way above my head people who spoke in very simple ways are people who i spoke to it was easier to speak to them because he's not here uh, i'll tell you father jobi is a very simple person to speak to there are no airs about him and so you can have any conversations very easy no sophisticated um thoughts that will come to confuse very simple we love speaking to simple people it makes conversation easier when we look through the scriptures god speaks very often to simple people even the way he works and chooses the ones he wants to work with he chooses simple people you take all the stalwarts who we speak about and we reflect about their origins are all very very simple starting from abraham abraham was a simple shepherd if we go through the scriptures the israelites were basically nomads they were moving from place to place and that is how abraham was called as well a simple shepherd and god related spoke to the simple shepherd you take the the others david david was a shepherd boy even his father didn't think very highly of him his father thought highly of all the other brothers but not about david david was a simple boy you take jeremiah jeremiah was a little boy he tells god i'm nothing and god says don't say you're a little boy god uses the simple after all he called the disciples the apostles fisher folk he could have called scribes and pharisees who knew the law and were sophisticated no he he chose the simplest of them god speaks a lot with the simple and god dwells with the simple no wonder when they come the shepherds come to jesus they are gifting their simplicity are we able to gift our simplicity 
in Psalm 116 verse 6 the Lord protects the simple God provides for the simple he protects the simple in Luke chapter 10 verse 21 the Lord would say I thank you father for you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned and you have revealed it to little children take the simplicity of little children it's a beautiful virtue and that is why St. Vincent de Paul put it in to one of the five virtues, the special virtues for every Vincentian. And he exhorts every Vincentian to have those virtues and one of those virtues is simplicity. Not to have too much of complication within ourselves. But with a simple heart to present ourselves to Jesus. There he will be able to use us. Like he used Abraham like he used David, like he used some fisher folk, like he used the simple shepherds. Let us be able to decorate our heart today with simplicity so that God can dwell in us and the Lord can speak to us. Wouldn't you want to hear the voice of God? Set aside our sophisticatedness in the presence of Jesus. Maybe, yes, when we speak in our careers, in our, in our workplaces, fine. We might be people who need to speak in those terms. But when we come into the presence of Jesus, set aside all that. Set aside all my learning. Set aside all my theology. Set aside all my, all my biblical knowledge and the biblical studies that I've done. Set it all aside. More so for us religious and priests. Set these aside. When we come into the presence of Jesus, let us not look at the sophisticated thoughts we have within us, the sophisticated understandings and theological concepts we have within us. Set it all aside. Come like the shepherds with a simple heart. We should not think, especially those of us in ministry within our churches, I've done all these things so well. I know everything. I've been doing it for so many years. Set it aside. With simplicity, come into the presence of Jesus. Hear Jesus, talk to me. And his simple words will touch our heart. Keep aside all our experience. Keep aside all our intellectual brilliance and come to him with simplicity. Decorate our hearts of discipleship this Christmas with simplicity. So that the Lord might dwell within us and he might speak to us. Let the shepherds teach us how to worship Christ. It isn't any of the Pharisees or the scribes who teach us. The shepherds taught us how to worship Christ in simplicity. Let us pray for that gift and that grace today when we are in this adoration. Let's all kneel. Lord Jesus, I thank you for all that I have learned, all that I know, all that my experiences have taught me. But Lord, today when I come into your presence, and every day when I come into your presence, I want to be like the shepherds. Because like, is, like it was with the shepherds, I know it can be with me. That you will dwell with the simple. And you will speak to the simple. I want you to dwell in me, Jesus. And I want you to speak to me. I would love to hear your voice. I would love to have conversations with you, Jesus. So help me be simple. Today I pray for the gift of simplicity. I don't want to act sophisticated in your presence. 
I don't want to stand in your presence like I know a lot. I know nothing, Lord. And I'm happy with that. When I'm in your presence and I say that I know nothing, I'm happy with it. I want to be like Jeremiah who said, I'm only a child. I want to be like David when he was chosen, only a young boy. I want to be like Samuel who you chose as a little one. Here I want to come with my simplicity. Like the shepherds. You dwell in me and you speak to me, Lord. How wonderful it would be this Christmas. How powerful it would be this Christmas. If my Lord spoke to me because it was easy for him to speak to me. Help me to be like the shepherds, I pray. While shepherds watched their flocks by night, all seated on the ground, the angel of the Lord came down and How beautiful that the shepherds were given this message. Simple people. Lord Jesus, you chose them. The Father chose them. And they came to you and they knelt and they worshipped in their simplicity. No questions, no sophisticated thoughts, just in the pure simplicity of their heart. Give me that message as well. During this season, let the angels come to me and give me the good tidings in my heart. Let the message reach me as well. Prepare my heart to be simple enough to receive your message. I celebrate today those simple shepherds and I celebrate their experience because in their experience is my hope that I too in my simplicity will be able to hear the voice of my Lord. I will be able to experience in worship. While shepherds watched their flocks by night all seated
this Christmas, my Lord will speak to me. Keep my heart simple and prepared. Amen. Let us pray the prayer for Christmas. Loving Father, help us remember the birth of Jesus, that we may share in the song of the angels, the gladness of the shepherds, and worship of the wise men. Close the door of hate and open the door of love all over the world. Let kindness come with every gift and good desires with every greeting. Deliver us from evil by the blessing which Christ brings and teach us to be merry with clear hearts. May the Christmas morning make us happy to be thy children and Christmas evening bring us to our beds with grateful thoughts, forgiving and forgiven for Jesus' sake. Amen. Let us prepare to receive his blessing. Down in adoration falling Low the sacred host we hail Low ancient forms departing Dear Given them bread from heaven, having in itself all delight. Lord Jesus Christ, you gave us the Eucharist as the memorial of your suffering and death. May our worship of this sacrament of your body and blood help us to experience the salvation you won for us and the peace of the kingdom where you live with the Father and the Holy Spirit. One God forever and ever. Mother, pray for us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. So dear friends, uh, we continue this journey. Please do share it with others. 
Also, this coming um, Saturday, we are having our anniversary, our third and second anniversary of the retreat center. This Saturday, that's the 16th from 9 to 4 here in the retreat center. So please do join us for this experience over here and we celebrate Christmas and we celebrate our anniversary. So please do join us for that as well. God bless you. We will be preparing to celebrate the Eucharist. and order, glory and power, riches and wisdom and strength. Blessing and order, glory and power, riches and wisdom and strength. Behold, the Lord will come, descending with splendor to visit his people with peace, and he will bestow on them eternal life. 
in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen the grace of our lord jesus christ and love of god and the communion of the holy spirit be with you all and with your spirit good morning my dear sisters and brothers in christ good morning father as we celebrate this eucharist let us offer all our prayer intentions unto the lord with a simple heart we have our intentions but we are not offering our solutions as well to the lord just our intentions our prayers as mother mary would pray at cana they do not have it so we offer our prayers our needs before the lord not the solutions that we have humanly already thought of so with a simple heart with a humble heart remembering the word of god first peter chapter 5 verses 7 humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of god for he will exalt you in due time cast all your anxieties unto him because he cares for you so with a humble heart a simple heart like the heart of the shepherds who received the message of birth of jesus and with that message who received jesus as their savior and so joyful in their simple heart to go and see jesus the savior their hearts were filled with joy because they were so simple let's offer our hearts unto the lord everything that is against that simplicity of our heart could be our questions our confusions our concerns our complaints to the lord let's keep that aside and come to the lord with a simple heart like the shepherds this day we shall offer an special we and pray for all the parents who are worried about their children their children going away from the way that they have opened for them or they have guided we pray for those children who deny obedience to their parents and their words we pray for that unity we pray for that love to make changes and bring miracles in relationship between parents and children and so we now recall to mind our sins and we ask our heavenly father to cleanse us purify us and make us worthy to celebrate the sacred mysteries of our salvation and so with a contrite heart let's all pray together i confess to, to almighty god, god and to you my brothers and sisters that, that i have greatly sinned, sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what i have done and in what i have failed to do through my fault through my fault through my most grievous fault Therefore I ask blessed Mary of a virgin all the angels and saints and you my brothers and sisters to pray for me to the Lord our God May almighty God have mercy on us and forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life Amen Lord have mercy Christ have mercy Lord have mercy. let us pray grant that your people we pray almighty god may be ever watchful for the coming of your only begotten son that as the author of our salvation himself has taught us we may hasten alert and with delight with lighted lamps to meet him when he comes who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the holy spirit one god forever and ever amen
Oh, that you had paid attention to my commandments. A reading from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 48, verses 17 to 19. Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. I am the Lord your God, who teaches you to profit, who leads you in the way you should go. Oh, that you had paid attention to my commandments. Then your peace would have been like a river, and your righteousness like the waves of the sea. Your offspring would have been like the sand, and your descendants like its grains. Their name would never be cut off or destroyed from before me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. Your response is, He who follows you, Lord, will have the light of life. He who follows you, Lord, will have the light of life. Blessed indeed is the man who follows not the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the path with sinners, nor abides in the company of scorners, but whose delight is the law of the Lord, and who ponders his law day and night. Response. He who follows you, Lord, will have the light of life. He is like a tree that is planted beside the flowing waters that yields its fruit in due season and whose leaves shall never fade and all that he does shall prosper. Response. He who follows you, Lord, will have the light of life. Not so are the wicked, not so. For they, like winnowed chaff, shall be driven away by the wind. For the Lord knows the way of the just, but the way of the wicked will perish. Response. He who follows you, Lord, will have the light of life. Acclamation. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Praise ye the Lord. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord will come. Go out to meet him. He is the Prince of Peace. Alleluia, 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 praise ye the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus said to the crowds, To what shall I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to their playmates, We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We sang a dirge, and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say he has a demon. The son of man came eating and drinking. And they say, look at him, a glutton and a drunkard. A friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is justified by her deeds. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear sisters and brothers in Christ, the gospel passage today, Jesus bring forth the attitude, how the heart of the people who are listening to them, listening to Jesus is set. It's in such a way that Jesus is telling them, the Lord has, the Lord has taken the ways that you wanted rather than or rather in other words let me put this way the Lord has changed according to how you wanted not changing the message for example just look at John the Baptist and Jesus both of them came and called the people of God to repentance 
Their listeners, their message was repentance. We would read in the gospel according to St. Matthew chapter 3, where John the Baptist starts and everyone is coming to receive baptism of repentance in River Jordan, including Jesus. He called for repentance saying, it's time. It's time of Lord's judgment to change, come for repentance. And look at how John preached to them. There was no preaching or the way he put it was so harsh. So harsh when he sp spoke about God's day of judgment. But now when you look at Jesus, Jesus is talking about the kingdom of God is near. Why should you repent? Repent, the kingdom of God is near. Through repentance, you enter into the joy of the kingdom of God. Whereas on the other side, John the Baptist said, repent for there is punishment for those who do not repent. My dear sisters and brothers, see these two approaches to the same message, how the same message came to the people. But when John the Baptist preached, Jesus is quoting here saying, you have a demon. And when Jesus came, gathering everyone around the love of God, they said, he is a glutton and drunkard. So the basic heart that these people who are listening to him is, we do not want to change. We do not want to change. We do not want to receive the message. Rather, we will shoot the messenger. We don't want to receive the message but we will shoot the messenger. That's their attitude. Today, when we, when we read it together with what we reflected in the morning about the shepherds, their hearts are now unteachable. Their hearts are so hard, their hearts are so haughty that no one could teach them, no one could change them, no message of God could penetrate their heart. They've closed it. They have barricaded it. They have put a fortress around it. They do not want anything to go in. They want to live the way they want. See, see when, you, when you look at that kind of a heart, a proud heart, not a simple heart, it's not easy to teach them. Even God could not teach those who were proud. St. James, in the letter of St. James, chapter 4, verses 6, it's a quotation from Proverbs, chapter 3, verses 34. It says, God opposes the proud and shows favor to the humble. God opposes the proud and favors the humble because even God cannot do anything in the heart of the proud. Because they do not want to change. They do not want to change. And I remember this when uh, I was in the second year of my formation. That was in 2001. Uh, there was a competition, essay writing in English. Since we were not from the English medium schools, English was not the first language. So we had to learn it, undoing a lot of learning that we already had. And uh, the first thing they, th ta they ta taught us was uh, to think in English, which was, which was a weird thing for us because we used to do think everything in our language and translate it. So when you translate it, the word, you know, the order of the words change. So it is even dif more difficult when you put it into writing because it has to go through that process of thinking in my language and then translating it into English and putting into the words with the spellings corrected and having the grammar correct. And this essay competition is taking place. I don't remember the theme, but it was some social theme and we are writing essay competition. And after the competition, I got a good prize, like uh, the first among the three. I got my paper and I was, I was so, so happy because many those who knew the language, many who have come after they have started working or even some of them were teaching. So they came and they do, did not get, 
I got the prize and I was very happy. And that year, the end of the year, there is a publication that uh, we do, uh, a magazine, a uh, handwritten magazine we do. So during that, uh, for that, we need to do your contributions uh, in terms of poems, stories, essays, drawings. You can give whatever you would like. Creative activities. So I gave, I thought, okay, I have this one, which uh, this essay, which won the prize. So I could easily give that. So I gave that to uh, the priest who was in charge of it. And we wanted to make the corrections and gave it to him. And the same priest who gave me prize for this one, who told me, you take it back, there is a lot of correction that needs to be done in this. I was so unhappy. Uh, three months ago, I was very happy. Now when I'm giving it for the manuscript magazine, he's saying, you have to make a lot of corrections. I told him, Father, this won the prize. He said, yes, this won the prize. I gave you the prize because this was one among, it's not the best in itself, but it was the best among the others. So you can imagine how hopeless the others were. And then I said, no, I'm not publishing it. And I took it back because I was so unhappy that this priest who gave me the prize, he's denying it now. So then I took it and kept it in my file. So we used to keep those in the file, those kind of uh, memorials, those kind of uh, uh, you know, treasures, we keep it in the file and keep it, you know, it goes with us wherever we go. So after three or four years, maybe somewhere in my philosophy, I found this lying with my files. I took it. By the time I've progressed from uh, stage one to two to three, so now I took it. And I was reading it and I was thinking, a child in its fourth grade or fifth grade would write better than this. A child in fourth or fifth grade would write it better than this. I had the ideas, but when I translated into words, it was so horrible, so, so horrible. Could not make the meaning. And I was thinking of that priest, how he made a, uh, you know, how he made a meaning of what I had written. How could he understood the points? How could he understand the points that I have written in there? So hopeless. My dear sisters and brothers, this is same thing what happens. Because the second time when I gave that to the priest, he said, this is not good. Then I, I got it in my heart, so hurt. I got it in my heart that, okay, this won the prize, so this must be the best. He cannot say this is not good. So I didn't give it a thought again. I just took it from him, put it in the file. If I had read that, I would have understood. And that would have improved the quality of my life, at least in the, term, in, in the realm of that language. I never thought of it because I was so myself within me. I was so overwhelming with myself. That it was good. And I'm not able to, I'm not ready to change that. And this is where the same thing, nobody can teach me when my heart is full of myself. Thinking I am the best. And I choose what I can choose. This is the same thing with the people about whom Jesus is talking. Unteachable heart. Who choose to be difficult to the teacher, difficult to the parents or difficult to the masters. Maybe parents, you can relate this to your children or the children who are deliberately making life very, very difficult. Very, very, very difficult. You know, when you cook for them, they say, I don't like this. When you cook for some other day, I don't like this. I want this. So making it difficult. In our popular mission retreats, I've heard this our elderly priest saying this story when he speak when they speak about ma family life the husband newly married the next day the first day in their life first morning in their life this wife came to know that this husband loves eggs husband loves eggs but they didn't tell how he likes the eggs 
so she made boiled egg in front of him for the breakfast so he is eating it so happily but immediately the thought came to his mind if i eat this today she will cook the same thing tomorrow i'll have to eat it so he asked her to who told that i like eggs she said your family okay i like eggs but not boiled eggs i like fried eggs so the next day she made fried eggs so he looked at the eggs and said if i eat this tomorrow also she will fry the eggs and i will have to eat it so he said who told that i like fried eggs she said yesterday you told me okay but this is tuesday i like boiled eggs not fried eggs so she is getting confused but she is very smart so what she did was the next day she put a, an egg boiled and another egg fried so he can make the choice now he has nothing to say so in his thinking he said you do not know anything don't think yourself to be smart you boiled the eggs the boiled the egg which was to be fried and you fried the egg which was to be boiled see how we try to make life difficult for others i hope you can you can relate yourself relate to many around you so look at yourself and ask this question am i making the way of the lord difficult in my life do i make my life so difficult for the lord so that that he cannot touch i don't allow him to touch i don't allow him to transform and change me to a simple being where god can work in me god can stay in me psalms 25 9 we read he guides the the humble in what is right and teaches them his way unless you are humble and simple before the lord unless you have a heart that is teachable unless you are a heart open for the lord like the heart of the shepherds you will not be able to walk in the way of the lord it will not get you uh, into that way because you prefer to do what you like so today when you reflect when we reflect upon this gospel passage jesus is calling out to the attitude of their hearts john the baptist came they did not receive they shot the messenger not he did, they did not receive the message jesus came they did not want to receive the message but complained against the messenger they did not want to change they did not want to keep their heart humble now today the lord is asking my child can you open your heart in humility and simplicity before me i will do wonders and miracles in your life my dear sisters and brothers as we are decorating our heart with that simplicity like that of the uh that of the shepherds let's say ourselves jesus make my heart so simple and teach me your ways so that i walk in your ways let us pray god eternal father you involve in our life every moment as we reflect at today you walk with us every day emmanuel none of our close ones even our parents our beloved friends have never walked as you walked with us but jesus at times we make our heart so hard we make our life so difficult for you that you are not able to touch or we deny you that access to our heart jesus as we are preparing our heart for you in simplicity in humility give us a grace to have a heart always open to you always give access to you so that you would work miracles and wonders in our heart 
we make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We worship only you. You make our hearts brand new. She Brethren, that this my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings. And since we have no merit to plead our cause, come, we pray to our rescue with the protection of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming, the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfill the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with, all, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of all, earth and heaven sing Hosanna in your praise. He is blessed. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice 
and once more giving thanks he gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me the mystery of faith we proclaim your death o lord and profess your resurrection until you come again therefore as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection we offer you lord the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of christ we may be gathered into one by the holy spirit remember lord your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with francis our pope malcolm cardinal ranjit our archbishop the order of bishops and all the clergy remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy welcome them into the light of your face have mercy on us all we pray there with the blessed virgin mary mother of god with blessed joseph her spouse with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your son jesus christ through him and with him and in him o god almighty father in the unity of the holy spirit all glory and honor is yours forever and ever at the savior's command and formed by divine teaching we dare to pray our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil deliver us lord we pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our savior jesus christ for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours now and forever lord jesus christ you set your apostles peace i leave you my peace i give you look not on our sins but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever amen the peace of the lord be with you always and with your spirit so let us offer each other a loving sign of peace lamb of god you take, take away, away the, the sins, sins of the world, world. have and mercy on us lamb of god you take away the sins of the world have mercy on us lamb of god you take away the sins of the world grant us peace Lord Jesus Christ son of the living God who by the will of the father and work of the holy spirit through your death gave life to the world free us by this your most holy body and blood from all our sins and from every evil keep us always faithful to your commandments and never let us be parted from you
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us all safe for eternal life. Amen. Amen. Act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire earnestly to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as you are already there in my heart. I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. There's a place, a deeper place in you. Where my heart is set and true Holy Spirit rain on me till your love has captured me take me to a deep We await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will change our mortal bodies to conform with His glorified body. Let us pray. Replenished by the food of spiritual nourishment, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that through our partaking in this mystery, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth, and hold firm to the things of heaven, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us serve the Lord in love and peace. Thanks be to God. Prayer for priests, O Jesus, eternal priest, Keep all your praise within the shelter of your sacred heart. Where when none may harm them, keep unstained their anointed hands, which daily touch your sacred body. Keep unsullied their lips, purple with your precious blood. Keep pure and unearthly their hearts, sealed with the sublime marks of your glorious priesthood. Let your holy love surround them and shield them from the world's contagion. Bless their labors with abundant fruit, and may the souls to whom they have ministered to be their joy and consolation, and in heaven their beautiful and everlasting crown. O Mary, Queen of the clergy, pray for us, obtain for us many holy priests. Amen. My dear sisters and brothers, this th Saturday, that is tomorrow, we are celebrating the second anniversary of our retreat center. 
and also we are uh, having the retreat advent and christmas retreat please join us at our retreat center from morning 9 a.m to 4 p.m thanking the lord for all the blessings and also preparing for christmas and celebrating the blessings of the lord and next saturday that's on the 23rd we have a retreat in tamil advent and christmas retreat in tamil and on the 31st december we are preparing uh, we thank the lord for all the blessings we receive this year and we prepare for the next year uh, from 10 p.m. 10 p.m. on the 31st December. God bless you. God bless you, Father. Oh, take me to thy sacred heart and seal the entrance all that from that home my wayward soul may never to St. Michael. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in the day of battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snare us to the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who wander through the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. <laughs>